Hello there! Welcome back to the Movavi channel, Daria here. This summer the Movavi vlog crew got hooked on shooting with a quadcopter, so I figured why not share a few tips with you. Our loyal subscribers know that we've already posted an episode on what you can do if you've bought a drone and you're new to aerial videography. If you've happened to be here just by chance, make yourself comfortable. I'll leave a link to the early video in the description. We decided to continue talking about shooting with a quadcopter and give you our 7 most favorite tips, both helpful for newcomers and more experienced pilots. Ready? Let's go! Keep still for 6 seconds. While you're recording a video, don't rush to change or even modify the position of your quadcopter or a camera. Try to record at least 6 seconds of steady drone movement or a static image. It happens every now and again that you'll capture a beautiful shot and be tempted to shift your quadcopter or camera to make the shot even better. But be patient. Hold it still for at least 6 seconds, otherwise you may run out of shots. Don't get too carried away with complex maneuvers. You don't have to always shoot in motion just because you have a drone. Think of your drone as a camera that is capable of shooting from otherwise inaccessible points, rather than a flying toy. Most of the time it's quite enough for a drone to be just hanging in the air and filming a static image. These shots with sea tides and a panoramic sunset were shot in a static way. They look good, even though the drone isn't flying anywhere. We may add some smooth movement. If we do so, the effect will be different, not necessarily any better or worse. It's up to you which version works better for you when you're editing your other videos. But complex maneuvers will not be appropriate in this instance, as that type of shooting will only interfere with your audience's enjoyment of the beauty of nature. Static shooting, or one that uses just a simple movement trajectory of the quadcopter, is especially relevant if there is some action in the frame itself. It might be a crowd of people walking, a car driving by, or a sports match being held. It looks far better, though, if a character is entering an otherwise empty static frame where the main subject appears. In this example, the drone isn't moving, the camera is pointing downwards or just filming what's going on. But it does look pretty nice. And here the camera is moving forwards, and there is a side view in the shot, while the quadcopter is moving to the side. Now here is a character rushing into the shot. Your quadcopter should be moving in the same direction, at a relatively slow speed. The third example is a simple but effective way to shoot a moving object, and it is to have it appear in front of the camera. You can leave your quadcopter hanging in the air or make it move slightly ahead. Or vice versa, point your drone directly towards the object. Combine a mid-shot with long-distance shots. Let me make it clear with the help of the scene. A drone isn't particularly fast to take off, and the camera is directly forwards. We see a mid-shot of the woods in the shot. The shot moves along the tree line, and now we see the treetops. We see a long-distance shot of the wooded valley. Notice that I'm using a simple maneuver again. The quadcopter is moving upwards in one plane. That's it. It works the same way when you move the quadcopter sideways. Instead of a forest, that might be a mountain slope, a building, or a wall. You might also end up with a terrific transition from a mid-shot to a long-distance one if you move the drone forward. You need to choose a landscape with a large object in the shot at the beginning of the scene and a breathtaking view behind it. For instance, here the camera is moving forward and the drone is getting closer and closer to the object. It is also gaining altitude a bit. Then, all of a sudden, the shot changes to a picturesque view. This method doesn't just look dynamic on its own, but is also a great opening scene for your video clip. Take ideas from movies Back before we had quadcopters, movies used cranes as well as helicopters and even hot air balloons as shooting aids. Now you can shoot the same way too. Get your ideas from classic box office hits. After all, these shots were created by acclaimed cinematographers and directors. For instance, a top view. It's pretty simple from a technical point of view. However, you can use it to create a beautiful artistic effect. For example, this video looks peaceful against the background of a big empty space. The camera starts moving smoothly away. It reminds me of the end of a movie. As if the titles are about to start rolling.
A quadcopter is often the best thing to get a long-distance shot. A shot like this is a great way to illustrate your location, that is, where the action in your video takes place. But in this case, keep in mind the context of the story you are telling in your video. Give it some thought. Why do you need this particular shot? The shot may tell the viewer about the scene of the action. In this case, a mid-shot follows one or a few consecutive long-distance shots. In the mid-shot, we can see the characters better. You can use your drone shots and arrange the sequence of shots when you're editing. Aerial long-distance shots can also emphasize the solitude of the main character against a quiet desert or highlight the majesty of the place, create a sense of scale of an event, such as a battle, or just function as a transition by moving the viewer to another location. Another example might be shots from a quadcopter flying above a picturesque landscape at a high speed, with the camera at a slightly higher angle than 45 degrees. This is quite a traditional method of shooting. If your quadcopter is flying forwards, it'll create an impression of getting familiar with the area. Now we have the same place and the same shot, but the drone is flying backwards. This creates the effect of leaving the place and so feels better for the end of a movie. And finally, how about this trick, which is also common in movies? A mid-shot. The object starts rapidly moving away, while the camera suddenly moves up and holds the object in a frame, and the mid-shot gradually turns into a long shot. People used to use cranes for these shots, but now you can capture the same effect with a quadcopter. Use a pan shot maneuver. Panning is the smooth movement of a camera. Do you remember how I recommended that you move a drone without moving a camera itself in our first video on quadcopters? That's a mistake many beginners make, but if you use this trick skillfully, it can produce some very cool results. To make this trick work, you have to get the hang of combining two movements. For instance, while the drone is slowly moving upwards, the camera makes a smooth downward movement from the horizontal position. The opposite also looks cool. That is, when a quadcopter descends, but the camera starts tilting up. It looks particularly good when there is a large object in the frame, like a tower, a monument, or a yacht. This trick also works if you move the drone forward while it's following a fast-moving object. Head the drone forward and start gaining altitude, while you carefully make the camera point down from the horizontal position. The opposite movement of a camera may also create an interesting impression. Let's say when the drone is flying forward at a pretty low altitude, perhaps just above the water, with the camera pointed directly downward. Then the camera smoothly switches to the horizontal position, while the drone starts ascending a bit. So we end up with a dramatic transition from a close-up of the water to a long shot of an entire reservoir. Try a circular motion. The next trick is super effective. It's hard to attempt it manually, though. I was lucky, because my drone can do the circular motion by itself, while keeping the main object in the frame. This trick looks awesome if you're filming an object, whether it's a person, a crowd, a car, boat, building, or other large objects. But it's also great for landscape shots. We're using the active track function on a DJI quadcopter in this case. You can also try the same trick manually, if you're skilled enough. It requires two directions for your drone, side to side and around its radial axis. You can add smooth ascent and backwards movement into a circular motion. Now the camera holds the main object in the center while flying around a circle. It is simultaneously moving away and going upwards in a spiral. Truly amazing shots! Doing the same manually is difficult, but not impossible. You need to navigate your drone in all four directions. Know your limits while editing. Do you know what I struggled to handle when I started to shoot with a drone? I felt like squeezing every single good shot into my video clip when I was done shooting. It was so hard to resist, you know? But good editing means concise editing. Instead of long-lasting landscape scenes, I have to pick just the best ones. It's at the montage stage when you should choose your few great shots. Those with a terrific image, with no random light hitting or wind shaking your quadcopter. Do you remember the rule of 6 seconds? It's time to thank Daria for this invaluable advice. Most typically, 4 seconds is enough for one scene, otherwise it could seem too long. Keep in mind the standard editing rules when you're going to combine the different scenes your quadcopter shot. We can apply them all here, especially the one about motion direction. Let's say if we join these two scenes, however beautiful they look, in this order, it's going to be hard to shake the feeling that your drone is flying back and forth for no real reason. 
It's better to place the scenes like this. Now would be a good time for me to tell you about the smooth acceleration trick. It looks great if you're going to show a character and then move to a long-distance shot so that the character begins to look like a tiny pinpoint against a vast landscape. We have one of this type, but it lasts way too long. A drone needs a little while to move away from the character to an appropriate distance. I'm going to select a segment in the middle of the scene and speed it up a little. Here is what I came up with. Now the scene isn't overextended, but the acceleration is too sharp. Here is a life hack for you. I'll cut this segment into five pieces. I'll set different speeds for each clip, so that the increase and decrease in speed are smooth. First off, twice as fast. Then three and four times. Then three times and twice again. Here is the result. That's all I was gonna say about drones today. We've done enough running about today, but it was totally worth it, don't you think? All the flights were amazing, flying is so dope. So if you've got your own drone, it's time to spread the wings. Now the Mavavi Vlog crew invites you to take a flight. Fasten your seatbelts and… Ouch! No! Hold on! You still have to watch our first episode on quadcopters to secure the safety of your flight. And don't forget to like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should know that it's you we've been waiting for. See you in our next episodes. Bye!